Okay, so let's fork the next project. The FCC time calculator. This one's much shorter than the Arvinda Ticker Ranger, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay. So unit tests are here. So your whole task is to make a time calculator based on all of this. So you have to create a function called add time that takes in the start time, a duration time, or a starting day of the week, and it should return a duration time to the start time and return a result. A next day and an end days later. Okay, so I have done this already, so as usual, I'm just going to look at my code on this side, and then I'm going to explain and type it live on this side. So then first, we need to add a parameter. Okay, so I, fo I forked it. Uh, whoops, I forgot to change the name to boilerplate. That's okay, I'll, I'll change it here. Uh, boilerplate. Boy. There, play, dash. Let's see, beautiful. Okay. So now we have the date parameter set up. We can start modifying our function. So modifier is what the AM PM is called. So I'm going to be using that term a lot. So so the AM or PM is later. So modifier is later. Zero days later. It's zero. Self-explanatory. Days of the week. Let's have a whole list of them. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, whoops. I don't know what that was. So now we want to split the string that is given to us. So the start time. So let's split it on the space. And then we take the second element of that split, which would be the modifier. And then we save the initial modifier, of course. And then. Just make sure my OBS is working correctly again. I, I just want to make sure because it's these take some time to record and they were they're a lot of effort. Start as you could to start dot splits. Now we're taking the time. So we're taking out the modifier. So and now now we're joining it. Very simple syntax to start off off. Oh, whoops. Uh, did not mean to do that. Control Z. I was clicking Shift Z. Ah, oh, Sometimes I really hate myself. Okay, next. We need to... The hour. So... Dot split. So we split it on the colon. And then we take the minute. Oh, whoops, I forgot an equal sign there. Hold up. And then, uh, this is one. Oh, whoops, did not mean to do that. So now we're checking if the minute is greater than 59. Then we subtract 60 from the minute and then we add one to the hour okay so that's simple for now so then uh, we're taking the modifier so if it's the hour is like one then the modif then the modifier would be one in this case okay and then uh, now we are checking if the hour is greater than 12 we minus by 12 because it's always going to loop back and the modifier is going to change in the next syntax. So, so now we're checking if it's over 11, then a modifier is equal to 12. So modifier, so now we're going to use a ternary operator right here. Was it a ternary? I think this is called a ternary operator, yeah. 
uh, goes to am, else, am. It's all in one line. Easier to see. And it does it all at once. Then, we add one to the modifier. As you can see here. So if the modifier is not even, so we want to, if the modifier is not even, then uh, we have to change it to, if the initial modifier was PM, we make it AM. If not, it becomes PM. So it just switches like that. Like exactly how the Boolean demod problem is. Go check that out, by the way. That's not going to be in the description, sorry. Then, uh... Oh, whoops. So if the original one was PM, then it makes becomes AM. Else it becomes... PM. Beautiful. Then... We want to come out of this if statement here. And then check how many days later we it is. Oh, whoops. So then we take the number of modifiers later it is and divide that by 2. That will tell us how many days are later. Because if there's 48 modifiers later, then we know that there's it's one full day later. If that makes sense. Then, uh... Now we're making a new time. So we're using an F string for that. Makes it very easy. And it's like our return list in a previous problem. Except in this, we're just using an F string. So now, this is the one of the regest properties. So uh, we're making it to the right. Whoopsie. Yeah, that's good. So then, now we're checking if the day parameter exists. Then, so we take the days of the week. And we take the index of that, and it becomes the title. That's a really good uh, built-in function you'll learn, title. Uh, this is a good course. This is definitely a good course by Charles Severance. He's a really good teacher, and I'm really happy I took the course. Weekday, no, weekday. We want to take the weekday. Oh, I thought my connection just, like, just got destroyed for a second. That would have been tragic. Let me just make sure my OBS is still recording. I I just I'm just over paranoid. I'm sorry. Okay, so then we're taking a modulus seven. How many days of the week there are? So it's looking for the correct day, and then this card, the new weekday, will be our new output. So, and then how many days later? So days underscore of oh jeez week. And then we take that index. So weekday. Yeah, I don't know why I keep typing weekdays. It's not. There's no days. It's just a day. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Oh, that keeps happening. Okay. Then uh, we also check if the days later because that is not, even if the day parameter isn't there, it has to be the next day. So you have to tell them if it's the next day or not. So then uh, we check if it's the next day. So then if it is, then we put the bracket next day. So then oh whoops. And then if the days. Oh, I don't know why this keeps happening. If days underscore later is one, then new underscore time. So the new time, we write the the new time over here. The amount of days later. Beautiful. Because that doesn't matter based on the the optional argument. Beautiful. So now we're returning a new time. That's done. Okay. So let's run it. Make sure it works. And it passes it in 0 0.002 seconds. It's amazing. And it ran all of the tests and it's okay. So that's it for the time calculator. Let's move on to part three.